brought to you by Cowan's Optical. They're passionate about service. Their Newfoundland owned and operated stores allow them to go the extra mile. Cowan's Optical, where the focus is on you. Forecast from Power Airlines and Aerospace meteorologist Brian Wells. For St. John's Metro, rest of the Avalon, Bureau Peninsula, and Clarenville tonight, partly cloudy, light wind, low of minus 5, wind chill minus 11. Tomorrow, sun clouds, like folks um, we're going to uh, do some reading um, uh, for next few little videos I suppose and if anybody remembers from my previous YouTube channel Rena 63 the old channel you can remember I uh, read out some uh, some things from this uh, from this book and this is the book from uh, from VOCM 590 CHVO 560 carbon here and um, this is the log book of a transmitter site that used to be over on the Tilton Barrens in Harbour Grace in Tilton uh, and it was owned by VOCM but the transmitter belonged to CHVO 560 and basically this is the log book that was kept at the site um, I believe from what it says here starting in 1980 until 1992 there's entries in this log book for that particular transmitter site on Tilton Barrens and um, basically my father was a chief engineer or a broadcast radio broadcast uh, engineer um, with CHVO for many years then uh, we moved to uh, St. John's here now and where he became chief engineer with VOCM 590 um, he was responsible for looking after a lot of the radio stations across the island uh, he spent many 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 days and hours in uh, at Tilton, Barrens, um, in Marystown, Clarenville, Gander, Grand Falls. Um, well, this one here is for the Tilton Barrens uh, transmitter site uh, that ran for uh, CHVO 560 kilohertz. And this is the book that was kept on site. In the, in the transmitter building and all the problems issues that they had throughout the years was all kept in this logbook it's actually a piece of history um, so our next few videos I guess in a little while we'll uh, do some reading out of this uh, out of this logbook I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that may be interested in in hearing and listening I suppose to what is wrote and written within the uh, covers of this logbook there's a lot of information here but uh, but yeah so I'm gonna spend some time um, when I had this uh, when I done the videos on this logbook um, on the last channel, um, there was actually a lot of people interested in what was what was written in here. So I figured I would uh, release this information again here on YouTube. We'll start over and uh, see what happens. Anyways, folks, uh, let's let's get her done. Let's get her started. 
And the first entry for the book is 850 kilohertz CHVO. That's the um, that's the actual original frequency that CHVO used before they took the new frequency of 560 kilohertz. Uh, 850 was the actually the original frequency that was used by CHVO at the time. It says right here, it says 850 kilohertz CHVO uh, transmitter log. Officially on the air, 11.30 p.m. October 6th, 1980 with VOCM program. CHVO program started at 6 a.m. with John Harvey, October 7th, 1980. Um, a list of off-air times and dates on the last page. And it says sphere fuses in the CD cabinet, CT cabinet. So, there you go. All right, I don't want to hold that uh, this that camera. It's hurting on the hands, arms, and that holding that camera a long time. So then I'm just going to read this. Uh, so this is the entries starting at uh, October seventh, nineteen eighty. At 6.10 a.m. Transmitter went off the air. Arrived the transmitter at 6.25. Uh, a high voltage overload was indicated. Checked for visual signs of shorts on the front door interlocks and saw none. Reset transmitter and all okay. Um, that entry was done by, by Dad. Uh, another entry for October 7th, 1980. Visit site, readings, head pad inserted in studio audio and STL to reduce modulation, adjusted Optimod input to compensate. Um, evidence of mouse in a transmitter building. <laughs> you, you'll hear a lot about this mouse <laughs> throughout this book. <laughs> I actually seen this mouse. Um, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was actually at this transmitter site a few times with uh, with Dad when I was growing up. Lived up in Carbonier, and uh, there was one one day I actually spent three days out at the transmitter site, and uh, basically he wanted to uh, put a a drain right around the whole building, and had to be about four and a half feet deep, five feet deep, and had to dig it by hand because uh, outside the back end of the building there was a lot of, or I should say, there was cables, coax cables. Uh, high wattage cables run out for the back of the building to the tower site that was out on out on the field on back. And uh, I spent close to three or four days digging a trench right around that whole site. And... Uh, then we had to backfill it with crushed stone to help with drainage. Apparently it had a lot of a lot of water build up and flooding there, I guess. And uh, the drain did help, actually. So <laughs> thumbs up for me. And I actually dug it by hand with a pick and shovel. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. So now again at October 13th, 1980. At the request of Reg, and Reg was the chief engineer of UOCM. For many years until he retired. Um, Ridge is a well known, well known name, well known person at VOCM from back then. And a lot of people would know Ridge. Even I met Ridge, he was a really nice guy. At the request of Ridge, visit the site to check and reset phase angle. Um, hot dog, John Hurry, has key to fit to uh, fit building. Uh, hedge on, watch and reset the phase meter. Uh, for me by phone while uh, he changed taps in town number one hut uh, to get the phase angle to zero percent or zero degrees change in phase angle uh, came about with a replacement of all underground wiring output current uh, rose by one amp with the phase change back to one degree corrected to 10 amps hut number one common point 10.5 amps tower number two out 6.8 amps. Uh, tower number one out 7.8 amps. That was October 13th, 1980. Um, another entry October 14th, 1980. 
transmitter off air with an IPA overload indicated. Uh, crystal switch had turned itself off. Turned on oscillator and reset transmitter and all worked okay on air at 5.53 a.m. Um, calculated off air was 70 minutes approximately. And October 14, 1980, um, this is RF output 4,900.5 watts. Input power 7,840 watts. Effective power 62.506%. Um, October 16th, 1980. Visit site with uh, Pecan, not sure who that is, to determine power level for final proof measurements. IK 1.8 amps, uh, EP 5 kilovolts, RF line 10 amps, input 9000 watts, output 5000 watts, efficiency 55.5%. Um, we got our entry October 25th, 1980 at 9.42 a.m. Um, transmitter off air from 9.20 found that uh, line breaker in, um, in cult regulator had tripped. Breaker was warmed to an extent that the difference could be felt in heat between the line and the load breakers. This is the second time for that same breaker to trip. The other time was in August of 80. Um, preset um, breaker and back on the air at 9.44 a.m. Um, another entry, October 25th, 1980, 11.55. Off air at 11.35, on air at 11.53. Um, the Kelk, re Kelk regulator, it looks like it's K-E-L-K. -E None of you guys know what that is. If you do, put in the comments below. I have no idea what kind of regulator this is. It looks like Kelk. Kelk regulator, I'll call it Kelk regulator, I don't know. Uh, line breaker again. Put Kelk in bypass. Um, we'll get tools to take it apart with and find trouble. Running now with no regulator. Awesome. And then we goes again. October 27th, 1980 at 9.30 a.m. Um, it's like... I'm not sure what the hell that word is there. I'll say, I'll say, well, no, I'll just skip that word, I don't even know what it is, it's hinge scratches. Anyway, uh, mod monitor modulation 100%, um, regular 125%, uh, POS average mod 87%, uh, need BNC connectors and transmitter monitor. Need to install weather stripping under the door to keep the wind out, tower lights all on. Hut number two had snow on the floor. Door doesn't seem to be tight at the bottom. Cock regulator still bypassed. Um, yeah. And this, uh, so what we'll do when I do these uh, videos, I'll just do them by month, so they're not too long. Um, this will be the last, last one for this video. This one is uh, October 31st, 1980 at 9.30 a.m. Inspection, uh, carrier level meter on TFT modulation monitor, st monitor stuck. Added pot and series with our sample input to reduce level. Adjust it, optimod output upwards slightly. Mod monitor indicates 100 per minus 100% modulation every two to five seconds plus 115 percent at 10 second intervals and plus 20 125 uh, percent infrequently raise transmit output power slightly to 10 amps indicated so here we have it so 
We even have a bookmark to go with, POCM 590, the friendly 590, and we'll put that in the book here, and we'll keep track of our progress in the videos. So anyways, the next one, the, the next video will be from November uh, 2nd, 1980, and we'll continue on. So, if you're interested in, uh, in hearing these, me reading these, uh, this lot book out more, comments below, thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Lots of videos to come. Uh, a bit slack on, on videos lately. I haven't got a lot of material. <laughs> I haven't got much much to do at the moment. Uh, I might have to take some of the parts I got accumulated and start building some stuff. Eh? Anyways, I'll uh, end it at this. And folks, we shall see you later. Uh, tomorrow, if nothing else is on the go here on the bench, we'll do another entry out of the logbook. So basically, I think that's what we'll do. Uh, if I got no entries, no, or I should say, no real videos to, uh, to upload, I'll uh, read from the logbook, and that'll give us something every evening. Anyways, shall chat later, folks. All the best. And uh, again, subscribe, like, um, comment, obviously, and share the video. Anyway, folks, we're out of here. We're now 63. Out.